Hello and welcome everyone to Mario's Home Recording Quickies, the show where everything is made up and the points don't matter. Today we are going to talk about recording guitar and we're going to talk about my method as well as my personal for favorite way to record guitar. <laughs> Now I'm going to try to keep this video as short and simple as possible because this topic gets everyone angry, everyone has their own opinion, and can quickly turn into a self-masturbatory exercise. So I'm really just going to go over the basics and I'm going to go over the complete signal chain starting from the guitar, going to a guitar amp, to your mic, to your mixing board, to your compressor, and then your final medium. The first and only thing you're gonna to wanna to do when recording guitar is taking your SM57 right up against the grill cloth. Okay, that is obviously a joke, and you know, that's kinda of like the standard way for people to record guitar, but in my experience, that has rarely ever worked. The only time I find taking a dynamic microphone and putting it right up against the grill cloth like that, like an SM57, is with my Valve Junior when I'm really just going for a really raw and gritty kind of rock sound. And you know, you're gonna get a lot of bottom end when you do that because you're going to be making use of the proximity effect that um, is a result of using a dynamic microphone like this. And in my experience, that extra bottom end that comes from doing that hasn't served me justice. I'm already dealing with a lot of mud as is due to the bad acoustics in my recording space and the extra mud of just that proximity effect just doesn't do me well. Most of the times I'm looking for what people may uh, describe as like kind of a 60s guitar type of sound and that's a little bit of a thinner sound not a lot of bottom end and um, that's kind of the sound that I prefer and I find it easier to mix with. Okay so let's start with the first part in the signal chain the guitar and this is the first thing you want to make sure is set up before you even think about recording any guitar tracks and you know I'm showing the telly here and it because it's such a simple guitar with only a few controls right there is the bridge selector switch and a tone control and a volume. And you know, most of the time I have my preferred setup. I'm almost always use the uh, bridge pickup solely and I have the tone knob turned all the way to the high tone and the volume all the way through. Now, depending on what guitar you have, obviously the settings are going to be different, more complicated, etc. But that is a step that you cannot overlook. The obviously changing the bridge is going to have a big effect on the tone that you're eventually going to be recording and that's not something that is insignificant. So always keep even the simple things like this in mind. Also, even something as minor as how you tune your guitar can affect your overall sound. Um, I've talked about this before in my 60s garage rock guitar video where you might want to tune by ear if you're trying to go for an authentic 60s garage rock sound, right? You're not gonna be using a um, electronic tuner if you were in a garage rock, garage rock band back then, right? So even something as minor as that can affect your final track. Okay, let's move on to the amp. Your guitar amp is going to be the biggest factor in your guitar tone in your final end result. Guitar amps shape the sound quite a lot and the controls here that you can manipulate are going to affect that sound as well. Now, I love my Twin Reverb. I use this a lot in my recordings. Probably about 90% of the guitar tracks that I record are through this Twin Reverb. I love this guitar amp so much that I rarely use any guitar pedals when I am recording. Now, obviously this is extremely going to be up to your opinion. You could choose to use any guitar pedals you like, especially fuzz, which I do use um, every now and then. So let's actually talk about the controls that you can manipulate here and that how I um, kind of choose the settings for when I'm ready to record guitar. All right, so we're looking at the front controls of the amp. For the twin reverb, you're gonna have two uh, input sections, right? You have the normal input section, which doesn't have any reverb or tremolo. Who the hell would ever use that, right? And then you have the vibrato uh, channels, which this has the reverb and the tremolo effects. Now, I love reverb, so I almost always exclusively use this input. Now, 
I'm not gonna go too specific into the amp controls because you know, this, I want this to apply to whatever guitar amp you're using, right? So let's talk about amps that have a master volume control because that is really important uh, feature on this amp. The first volume control on this amp is the preamp section. And this master volume controls the output tubes on this amp. Now, the way I like to set up this amp is I keep this volume knob as low as possible that passes a signal through the tubes. I think by doing this, I get the best dynamic range of the guitar signal. And if I go too high on here, I just, it, it gets a little too overdriven for my taste and for the type of 60s kind of guitar sound that I tend to like. You know, it sounds better with a clean sound um, like that. And I make up the volume with the master volume knob. And by doing that, I'm able to keep the, the uh, tone of this amp clean while being able to get a high volume. Now, normally, if you, had a, if you had an original twin reverb amp, there is no master volume. You just have this main volume. And by making it loud, you also get that overdriven sound. So I really like the silver faces with the master volume. I think this is a great addition that Fender added. And this has a big part to do with my personal guitar sound. Now, the EQ, we have the treble, the middle, and the bass, as well as this bright knob. I rarely ever use this bright knob. It gets a little too trebly with this turned on, so I almost always have this off. Now, the three knobs here are really important. These are going to be your main shaping factor of your guitar tone. Now, there is no magic formula that I use. It really depends on the song I am working on. Generally, I have the middle knob um, somewhere around eight to nine, and this is where the bulk of your guitar range sits in, is the middle EQ. The treble, I usually have it somewhere around the same, and this I change depending on really the end result that I'm looking for. How upfront do I want the guitar sound to be? If I want the guitar sound to be upfront and a lot of clarity, I obviously will make the treble higher. If I want it to be mellow and kind of in the background, you know, I might put it somewhere around five. The bass control knob, this is actually very important. And part of battling the mud that I find is, has to do with this bass EQ. And the lower I go, you know, you tend to lose a little body of the guitar sound that you want, but too high, it just turns into a rumbling mess, and it might sound great as a standalone track, but once you add the bass guitar in there, maybe some keys, it just turns into a mess. So I try to keep it maybe around six or five usually, once again, depending on the song. All right, so let's move to the reverb and the tremolo effects. Now, if you're familiar with my music, you know I love reverb, and uh, no joke, I almost always have this reverb knob on 10. I wish that this amp was designed with the zero, or the one rather, on this knob as the 10, and the 10 to be like double of what this amp gives me. But, you know, I I'm a little ridiculous when it comes to reverb. I often add extra reverb on my mixing board after the fact. Well, we'll get into that later. We're not at the mixing board yet. Let's stick with the amp. The tremolo, you know, this is once again going to depend on what song I am working on. For example, my song Doped Up Dogs, the intro to that song, I wanted a really psychedelic effect, so the intensity of the tremolo there is, you know, put at 10. Now, normally, if I just want a regular shimmer, I keep it somewhere in the middle, and I keep the speed somewhere in the middle. This master volume on this amp has the pull setting. Um, which gives you a little more punch, but personally, I don't really use that. When I am recording, I usually try to get this somewhere around the seven or eight. Each, each amp is going to have its sweet range where it performs the best. If I put this all the way to 10, not only do I annoy the out of my neighbors, but it gets a little too overdriven, a little too muddy, and I start to lose clarity. So, you know, usually somewhere around there works just Fine. 
All right, now let's move on to the microphones. Now, I am going to ruffle some feathers here, but in my opinion, the microphone has little effect on your end result. There are a bunch of videos on YouTube of people A-B comparison microphones, and they sound so close to one another that it's just, it's almost irrelevant to me. Almost keyword there. The differences in microphones a lot of the times can be made up very easily through the EQ on your guitar amp or the EQ on your mixing board. And personally, you know, I try not to go too crazy about it. I tend to like a lot, which I talk about, um, the Electro Voice uh, microphone series. And um, I particularly talk about the EV635 uh, microphone a lot. Now this is an omnidirectional microphone, meaning it captures sound from all directions. And I like this for two reasons. First reason is that there is no proximity effect. And as I talked about earlier with the kind of standard SM57 up against the grill cloth, you get a lot of bottom end from the proximity effect. And to me, it tends to be a little too muddy. Now, if you have something like an omnidirectional microphone and you could stick this baby right up to the grill cloth and you're not gonna get an excessive amount of bottom end. And I have done that quite a bit where I just put this right next to the grill cloth and it sounds fine. I also really do like these variable D um, electro voice microphones, and these have the variable D slot. These are all super cardioid microphones, um, but something that is special to these with this slot is that once again, it has a less pronounced proximity effect. And for the same reasons, I like to use these. Um, something I did, I forgot to mention about the second reason I like this mic is because it gathers a lot of sound from all directions, it being omnidirectional, you can really feather the amount of room sound you want with this by backing up this microphone as much as you need. I have found personally to my taste that the guitar amp sounds a lot better when you pull back the microphone from the grill cloth. I rarely ever stick it up against the grill cloth anymore. At minimum, I'll do like a three to six inches away. Um, but a lot of the times it sounds great even two feet away. And for some reason, I don't see a lot of people talk about that on YouTube when it comes to recording guitar. And to me, it, it was a game changer when I learned to back away the microphone. Um, you get some natural compression effects from the air, as well as that's how closer to how you're hearing the amp naturally in the room anyway. When you're playing your guitar amp, you don't have your ear up against the grill cloth unless you want permanent ear damage, you're gonna be listening to the amp from a few feet away, right? And you're tuning your guitar, the amp, to that sound that you're hearing in your ears, right? So if you want the sound that you were hearing in the room, it's probably best to back the microphone off a couple feet to mimic what you're hearing with your ears. And I definitely cannot forget talking about ribbon microphones when it comes to guitar recording. I also like to use this uh, ribbon microphone and ribbon microphones are great. They react quickly to all frequencies that they are hearing. It gets a wide range and ribbon microphones also are going to be picking up sound from the front of the microphone and the back of the microphone because they have a figure eight pickup pattern. And once again, for the same reason that I like to use this omnidirectional microphone, I like to use this ribbon microphone because I can feather how much direct sound versus room sound that I want in my final track. You do have to be careful with ribbon microphones because they have more proximity effect than a regular dynamic microphone like this. So if you're putting this baby right up close to your grill cloth, it is going to be very bottom, uh, bottom end heavy which might be something that you're looking for, but if it's going to be a busy mix, you're probably not going to want to do that. But I must reiterate, in my opinion, your choice of microphone is going to have little effect on your end result. Really, the more important thing is your microphone placement. So let's get a better view of this amp and I'll talk about that briefly. All right, so let's just say you ignored everything I said and you're starting with your microphone right up against the grill cloth as so. You're gonna, want to think about where exactly your microphone is going to be placed in relation to your speaker.
Now, there is a lot of A-B comparison videos on YouTube that you could watch for yourself where people compare where exactly the microphone is going to be placed. Usually, the consensus is right between the interface of the cone and the dust cap is the best bang for your buck. Now, I'm gonna ruffle some feathers here, and I'm gonna say, honestly, it has little effect on your end result. It obviously has some effect, but the amount is so minuscule that once again, just like differences in microphones, you could make up way more of effect just when the EQ of your amp or the EQ of your mixing board. It's really not that important. Now, let's just say, for example, your mixing board didn't have an EQ knob, then fine. Maybe this is important, but for most people, you're gonna have the ability to alter the EQ, so I wouldn't get too hung up on this. Just stick with the dust cap in the cone, and you're going to be fine. Now, one thing I like to harp on, especially in this video, I'm probably gonna mention it in a bunch, is back this microphone up. At least like this. At least. Just try it. It doesn't... You could do this. I'm not saying you can't. I've done it before. I do it a lot. But... I'm telling you, just try backing the microphone up. I don't know why more people don't talk about this. It's, it, it, to me, I get a way better sound. Now, the, when I say the choice of microphone isn't that important, I, I should clarify, the pickup pattern is going to be important for your microphone. This omnidirectional microphone is going to be capturing sound from all over the room. So as I was saying, I like to feather how much room sound I'm going to be getting versus direct sound from the amp. And that is altered simply by moving the microphone back or forward. My personal opinion is I like the omnidirectional sound I get. Now, if you want a more focused direct sound, Picking something like a super cardioid is going to get you there. It is going to reject a lot more of the room sound and you're going to get a guitar sound that is more in your face. Depending on the song you're recording, that might be what you want. For my kind of 60s garage rock sound, I like this a lot better. Okay, now this setup is really why I wanted to make this video. This is my personal favorite setup for rec recording my Twin Reverb guitar amp. And this was a game changer for me. When I added a second microphone to this setup, my world was changed. I love doing this. Most of the time, I will put one of these super cardioid EV microphones pretty close to the grill cloth, sometimes up against it, sometimes, as you can see here, about maybe three inches away. And then I will supplement this super cardioid microphone, which gives you a very direct sound, it's going to be rejecting a lot of the room sound, and I supplement it with this omnidirectional microphone. Now this is going to be, you know, about two feet or so away from the amp. So this is not going to be getting a lot of direct sound. It is going to be getting a lot of sound from all over the room. And as you guys know, I love my reverb, and this is the key. This microphone right here is the key. Now, you know, I like to switch it up. I don't always do this exact setup. Sometimes I will put the omnidirectional microphone there and put the hypercardioid there. Really, I just like to experiment, and everything I've kind of tried so far sounded great to my ears, and I really like this double microphone setup. Now, something you have to keep in mind when you're doing a double microphone on any source, not just a guitar amp, is you have to worry about phasing issues. And as long as you stick to the three to one rule, you're gonna be fine. The three to one rule, to quickly explain, is your second microphone should be at least a th three times the amount of distance your first microphone is from your source. So a three to one ratio. So let's just say, for simplicity's sake, this microphone was a foot away from the guitar amp that means you want this uh, microphone to be a little more than three feet. Maybe four feet would be fine, right? As long as you're somewhere around there, you're gonna avoid a lot of phasing issues between these two microphones. The so three to one rule, really important to remember. All right, so the next step in the signal chain from the guitar amp microphones is to your mixing board. And how you connect to your mixing board here is going to be really important. Your choice of preamps can affect the, song, uh, the, 
final tone greatly depending on what approach you take. Now, let's just say we are sticking with this double microphone setup that I have here um, that I wanted to make this video about. Anyway, I have two choices here. I could either just treat both of these microphones separately and send them to two separate tracks on my mixing board, or I could blend them pre the mixing board and send them down to one track so they just get recorded to, let's just say, one track here. And depending on the song I'm working on, depending on the production value, depending on how many free tracks I have open, that's really going to dictate what approach I take. Most of the time, I will mix it pre the mixing board. I'll use something like my, um, my Shure microphone mixer here, and I'll send one microphone to the first channel, one microphone to the second channel, and I will blend the two sounds from there. I will listen in my headphones, monitor the sound, and either add more of the closer direct microphone, or I'll add more of the farther, uh, uh, ooh, wrong focus, uh, the farther omnidirectional microphone. Um, so sometimes I will send one microphone to my microphone, my sure microphone mixer, the other one to my Boger power amplifier, uh, Bogan rather, power amplifier here. Sometimes I use my tube preamp. Come on, focus, you could do it. Sometimes I'll send one microphone, ah, uh, you know, sometimes I will send one microphone to this tube pre and one to this sure microphone mixer. It's really going to depend. You know, I could even just keep it simple and send it both to my, straight to my mixing board and blend it from there. Really, your possibilities are endless here. There's so many opportunities. And, you know, using something like these Shure microphone mixers is kind of my personal secret weapon. Um, you could really use anything that you could push hard. You know, this Bogan power amplifier, which is not meant for this purpose at all, can really dirty up the sound of your guitar. Um, you know, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I, I should probably do a whole other video just on these Shure microphone mixers because that's kind of the secret sauce to my sound to a lot of my songs is pushing these bad boys really hard. But that's for another video. All right, so we have the two microphones summed in some way. We're either sending them to two tracks or one track. The next thing you're going to want to think about is compression. Now, I really do not go crazy here with compression. I really am just catching the peaks and I'm not trying to shape the sound a lot at all, most of the time. If you're doing a really overdriven, fuzzed out guitar sound, anything like that, you really shouldn't be any using any compression at all. You're th this guitar signal is already going to be compressed from your guitar pedal. Whenever you do some sort of overdrive like that, what you're doing is clipping the sound waves. And by adding more compression, you're really just going to take the life out of the guitar sound. Now, when I do my clean sound, which is most of my time, as I said, I don't go crazy. Maybe I'll do a ratio of around 3 to 5. I'll do a moderate attack time and a quick release time. And once again, just ke catching the peaks, not trying to alter the sound that much because I love the sound of the Zam. I love the sound that I get in the room. I don't want to alter it that much. If the guitar is hard to hear in the mix, then fine. I will add more compression, but I really only use compression on guitar as a last step measure. Lately, I have been applying all of my compression during tracking before it ever reaches my tape machine. I have found this to be a lot quicker and saves me time in the long run. I actually have a whole video talking about this, and um, so if you're interested, you could watch that. But, you know, I usually just send the guitar signal right to my uh, tape machine right after the compression, and I try to get... Come on, focus, baby. And as most of you probably know, when you're recording on tape and you push the signals, you are going to get some compression effects. So, once again, that's why I do not go crazy with my outboard gear. I'm usually pushing the levels pretty high on my tape machine, and that takes care of some of the compression. Now, during my mix down is when I may apply some EQ and some effects. Okay, so this channel right here in the middle of the camera is an example EQ setting of a song I just mixed down using the same exact setup we just talked about on my twin amp. 
And as you can see here, I'm I'm putting a little bit of moderate EQ here, maybe um, increasing about 3 dB and decreasing about 3 dB in two separate EQ points. Um, I'm boosting the top end a little bit, but really not a lot. And you know, I'm really not gonna go into specifics for your EQ settings here because it's going to vary widely depending on the song you're working on, the other instrumentation, you know, there, there's no point in me telling you what EQ to either boost or lower because it's irrelevant. It's going to depend on what sound fits best with your song. And sometimes when I'm feeling really saucy, I will even send my guitar track to even more outboard reverb. And it gets a little out of hand at times, but I don't know what to say. I love reverb and it sounds so good. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I rarely will use my space echo on my guitar. Really only when I'm going for a really crazy guitar solo will I use the space echo. Those are really the only two effects. I don't really put chorus on my guitar. Really, I've never done it ever actually. Um, and you know, I will occasionally do a slap back delay on my space echo, but as I've been saying, I just love the natural sound I get from a twin reverb, and I try not to alter the sound that much. I try to keep it true to the room uh, sound as much as possible. All right, I think I talked enough about the signal chain that I often employ for my songs. Let's do show some examples now of me utilizing this twin microphone setup that is my personal favorite way to record guitar. Let's take a listen.
right, so what do you guys think? Did you like what you hear? Do you like the twin microphone setup? Are you gonna try it in your studio? And if you think I'm a fucking idiot and everything I say is full of shit, please let me know down in the comments. I would love to hear your opinion because recording is so subjective, especially when it comes to something like guitar. People get very pedantic about the little details. So, you know, let me know down below, you know, what microphones do you like to use, what microphone placements, what compression, who your favorite porn star is, whatever is the case, I would like to hear it. I hope you all learned something and I will see you all next time. Peace.